Uh, are you recording? Mm -hmm. Writing HTML is fine, but what if something goes wrong and you can't work out where the error code is? This article will introduce you to some tools that can help you find and fix errors in HTML. Uh, when writing code of some kind, everything is usually fine until that dreaded moment when an error occurs. You've done something wrong, so your code doesn't work, either not at all or not quite how you wanted it to. For example, the following shows an error reported when trying to compile a simple program written in the Rust language. Okay. Here the error message is relatively easy to understand. Unterminated double quote string. If you look at the listing, you can probably see how the print in hello world might logically be missing a double quote. However, error messages can get quickly more um, complicated and less easy to interpret it as, a pro as programs get bigger. And even simple cases can look a little intimidating to someone who doesn't know anything about Rust. The mm -hmm. debugging doesn't have to be scary though. The key to being comfortable with writing and debugging any prog programming language or code is familiarity with both the language and the tools. Okay. So HTML and debugging. HTML is not as complicated to understand as Rust. HTML is not compiled into a different form before the browser parses it and shows the results. It is interpreted, not compiled. And HTML's element syntax is arguably a lot easier to understand than a real programming language like Rust, JavaScript, or Python. The way that browsers parse HTML is a lot more permissive than how programming languages are run, which is both a good thing and a bad thing. So for a permissive code, uh, what do we mean by permissive? We generally, well, generally when you do something wrong in code, there are two main types of errors that you'll come across. So there's syntax errors. These are spelling errors in your code that actually cause the program not to run, like the Rust error shown above. These are usually easy to fix as long as they are, as long as you are familiar with the language's syntax and know what the errors mean or know what the error messages mean. Logical errors are the other kind. Uh, these are errors where the syntax is correct, but the code is not what you intended it to be, meaning that the program runs incorrectly. These are often harder to find than syntax errors, as there isn't an error message to direct you to the source of the error. Uh, HTML itself doesn't suffer from syntax errors because browsers parse it permissively meaning that the page still displays even if there are syntax errors. Browsers have built-in rules to state how to interpret incorrectly written markups so that you'll get something running even when it's not what you expect. This, of course, is still a problem. Uh, HTML is parsed permissively because when the web was first created, it was decided that among people to get their content published was more important than making sure that the syntax was absolutely correct. The web would probably not be as popular today if it had been more strict from the very beginning. True. Uh, active listening, so studying permissive code. It's time to study the permissive nature of HTML code. Uh, download our debugging example demo and save it locally. This demo is deliberately written to have some errors in it for us to explore. The HTML markup is said to be badly formed as opposed to well formed. Open up in a browser and you'll see something like this. Mm, let's see. Mm -hmm. Learning area. Oh, uh, student email. And then introduction. Debugging. All right. So what causes HTML errors? Okay. So unclosed elements. If an element is not properly closed, then its effect can spread to areas you didn't intend. Okay, so there's probably a, a bold element that wasn't closed starting here. Uh, badly nested elements. Nesting elements properly is also very important for code behaving correctly. Strong, strong, emphasized. What?
Hmm. Badly nested elements. Nesting elements properly is very important. Wrong, strong, emphasized. Sure, okay. Oh, maybe they didn't emphasize or uh, they didn't nest the emphasis properly. That's why like italicized too. And then same here. Yeah. Uh, and then I didn't close any of the list items. Mm. Unclosed attributes, another common source of HTML problems. Look at an example. What example are they talking about? So this immediately doesn't look great. Let's look at the code, uh, source code to see if it can work out why. So P, so paragraph, what causes? Okay. Yeah, that's not closed. So the paragraph is never closed. Um, okay, so the list, so the unordered list is closed. So here we have yeah, a bunch of li elements. Um, oh, the strong element is not closed on the second line. Yeah, it never gets closed. So the, okay, yeah, that's why all of this was strong or bolded. Okay. Um, then it can spread to areas you didn't intend. Badly nested elements. Okay, yeah, this is what I was saying earlier. So they messed up the nesting. They put the emphasis starting here. When it should have been starting here, I'm guessing. Let's see how that looks. Mm. Oh, they didn't close the quotations for the anchor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you couldn't even tell in the actual code. They didn't close the uh, tag itself. Yeah, that fixes the um, mm -hmm. the mumble jumble. That's whatever there. Oh, okay, that makes sense. When it yeah. says let's look at an example, and there wasn't any example. Okay. All right. Let's review the problem. So the paragraph and list items have no closing tag. Yeah. Oh yeah, the list items. Yeah, but that means the list items, like they don't have a closing tag, but it still like separates them into the list items properly. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, like it's not, uh, what's the word? Um, nested. You think like, it would be a nested list since you have one list item and then inside is another list item and then inside is a third list item. But instead oh, of yeah. like a list of like a regular list. Uh, no, it's a nested list, but uh, you can't see it because uh, there is nothing for reference in the unordered list tag. So if you, if you, if you put something uh, in front of UL, the unordered list tag, above the first listed element, you'll see sublists. Oh, so you're saying if I close the first list element down here? Uh, no, no, no. I'm saying that if you remove the UL, mm -hmm. I'm saying that uh, the fact that there is nothing inside the UL written is uh, why you can see this, uh, why you can, uh, why you're saying that uh, the listed elements are uh, as it is. No, I don't think I'm understanding. Okay, so if you put something in front of UL, yeah, the li elements will be shown as sublists, sublists to the UL. So put something like okay, give me a sec. Put something like what? Uh, put anything in in UL UL. 
are just above the first uh, undisclosed elements and I'm sorry unclosed elements mm -hmm. if you put a sentence something like uh, I don't know hello world or something it will show up uh, at, at the top at the top at the top No, it still shows as a yeah. regular list. Yeah, so no, that's that's what I'm saying that uh, it's listed just because there is nothing on the unordered list. If there was something on the unordered list, it would change the whole thing. But isn't, uh, aren't these in the unordered list? Yeah. Okay, whatever. I'm sure they'll explain it in here. Uh, the first strong element has no closing tag. We saw that. Um, this section is badly nested, so strong, strong emphasis. It's not easy to tell how this has been interpreted because of the previous problem. Hmm. The href attribute is missing the closing double quote. This seems to have caused the biggest problem. The link has not rendered at all. Now let's look at the markup the browser has rendered as opposed to the markup in the source code. To do this, we can use the browser developer tool. If you're not familiar with how, take a few minutes to review Discover. So in the DOM inspector, you can see what, has the, what the rendered markup looks like. Hmm. Actually, okay, so that's pretty accurate so far. Um So what's causing errors in the HTML? So Okay, I see, I see. So when the browser um, interprets it, it automatically adds in the closing uh, elements. Yeah. So you know how you know how uh, in the beginning, like this li is enclosed, mm -hmm. but when the browser reads it, yeah, it auto closes it. Auto closes it. So now yeah. and, uh, I should say this tries to fix it itself. Yeah, it tries to fix it itself. Hmm, that's cool. And then it also adds a strong, a closing strong here. Hmm. And then opening strong here. So close this one. And then I put a new one right here. Didn't intend. Why oh, no? Did it do that? Close this one. Yeah, and then I put a new one starting here. Okay. But I didn't close this one. Oh no, it did. All the way at the end. So it tries to fix it, but it it doesn't it tries, quite fix yeah, it. It tries properly. to fix it on what it thinks you want it to do. Yeah, it tr it fixes it so it doesn't break the whole page. Mm -hmm. So it can actually render something. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's pretty 
useful, I guess, actually. Well, actually, I don't know if that's useful or not. I mean, I'd rather have like one part of the page not properly rendered than the entire page. I think that's pretty useful. Oh, where it is. Yeah. But I feel like it'd be hard to debug if it's like this. Mm. Uh, let's see. So using the DOM inspector, let's explode our code. Let's explore our code in detail to see how the browser has tried to fix our HTML errors. The paragraph and list items have been given closing tags. It isn't clear where the first strong element should be, so the browser has wrapped each separate block of text with its own strong tag right down to the bottom of the document. The incorrect nesting has been fixed by the browser like this. Strong emphasize. Strong. Mm. The link with the, missing, with the missing double quotes has been deleted altogether. Oh, I actually didn't even look at that. Yeah. Oh, I didn't notice that either. The link with the missing double quotes. Uh, the last item looks like this, yeah. <clears throat> uh, okay, so HTML validation. So now you can see from the above example that you really want to make sure your HTML is well formatted, but how? So in a small example like the one seen above, it is easy to search through the lines and find the errors, but what about a huge complex HTML document? The best strategy is to start up by running your HTML page through the markup validation services created and maintained by W3C, uh, the organization that looks after the specifications that define HTML, CSS, and other web page technologies. This web page takes an HTML document as an input, goes through it, and gives you a report to tell you what's wrong with your HTML. Hmm, that was cool. All right. Um... To specify the HTML to validate, you give it a web address, upload an HTML file, or directly input some HTML code. Let's try this with our sample document. First, load up the markup validation service in one browser tab if it isn't already. Switch to validate by direct input tab. Copy all the sample document's code, not just the body, and paste it into the large text area shown in the markup validation service. Press the check button. Okay. Check. Oh, it gives you like a huge detailed error list. Warning. Consider adding a lang attribute to the HTML tag. N tag li. From line 21. Oh, I see. Okay. Mm. Oh, that's actually super Changing useful. List of errors and other information. Okay. Um, interpreting the error messages. The error messages can usually be helpful, but sometimes they are not so helpful. With a bit of practice, you can work out how to interpret these to fix your code. Let's go through the error messages and see what they mean. Uh, you'll see each message comes with a line and column number to help you locate the error easily. <clears throat> N tag li implied, but there were two. Uh, there were open elements, two instances. These messages indicate that an element is open that should be closed. The ending tag is implied, but not actually there. The uh, the line column information points to the first line after the after the line where the closing tag should really be but this is a good enough clue to see what is wrong. Unclosed element strong. This is really easy to understand. A strong element is unclosed and the line column information points right to where it is. N, N tag strong violates nesting rules. This points out the incorrectly nested elements and the line column information points out where it is. 
end of file reached when inside an attribute value, ignoring tag. This one is rather cryptic. It refers to the fact that there's an attribute value not properly formed somewhere, possibly near the end of the file because the end of the file appears inside the attribute file of value. The fact that the browser doesn't render the link should give us a good clue as to what element is at fault. That was the, uh, the anchor tag. Um, end of file scene and there were open elements. This is a bit ambiguous, but basically refers to the fact there are open elements that need to be properly closed. The lines number, the lines numbers point to the last few lines of the file. And this error message comes with a line of code that points out an example of an open element. Here has an example. <coughs> Okay. An attribute missing a closing quote can result in an open element because the rest of the document is interpreted as the attribute content. Unclosed element UL. This is not very helpful as the UL element is closed correctly. This error comes up because the A element is not closed due to the missing closing quote mark. If you can't figure out what every message means, don't worry about it. A good idea is to try fixing a few errors at, the, at a time, then try revalidating your HTML to show what errors are left. Sometimes fixing an earlier, earlier error will also get rid of the other error messages. Several errors can often be caused by a single problem in a domino effect. You will know when all your errors are fixed when you see the following banner in your output. The document validates according to the speci specified schema schemas and to additional constraints checked by the validator. Summary, so there we have it, an introduction to debugging HTML, which should give you some useful skills to count on when you start to debug CSS, JavaScript, and other types of code later on in your career. This also marks the end of the introduction to HTML module, learning articles. Now you can go on testing yourself with our assessments. The first one is linked below. Okay, sweet.